Welcome back. This is Mr. Conaway with Cody Middle School again. Today, I'm super excited. I get to show you one of my favorite things ever uh, in, in this STEM class of ours. We get to learn about an Arduino. And I'm going to show you one of those in just a second. But before we do, let's just go ahead and, and kind of look at what we have here. This should be something that's really familiar to us right now. We have our standard uh, power supply uh, right here. And then I've got four LEDs hooked up to that power supply in parallel. And so, you know, we've had a lot of fun getting these things to turn uh, on and off, on and off. But sometimes we want our lights to do more than just turn on and off when I power up the power supply. It looks like I got a loose wire there, All right? Sometimes I wanna have a little bit more control over my circuits so that I could get them to do different things. And that's where we're gonna put this thing to the side and bring in the star of today's show. It is an Arduino programmable microcontroller. And you can see, now I have four lights that are being controlled by this device right here that we're gonna call the Arduino. And we'll look at it more in just a second here. But these lights simply just don't turn on and off with the push of a button. Now these lights are being controlled somehow. So I can make a pattern or a display show. Uh, I, I could have more control over these lights. So what's going on here is that this is called an Arduino. And the purpose of an Arduino is to be a programmable microcontroller. What that means is I could make a circuit, like I've made a circuit right over here on this mini breadboard. I can attach that circuit to this Arduino. And you can see I've got some wires going up over here that are controlling the lights and then over here this is our ground pin to our, our negative pin and i can write a computer program that i send to the arduino and that computer program just like programs controlled our robots is going to control our circuit so i've written a program that controls all these lights that makes it uh, turn on one at a time then flash a few times and then turn off one at a time that is what we're going to learn how to do. Now, these uh, Arduinos, they're incredibly powerful, incredibly interesting things. I could make my own robot with an Arduino. I could make my own weather station with an Arduino. I could make my own simple video game with an Arduino. Basically, if you want to have some kind of control over a circuit, the Arduino is the one thing that you're going to go to. We're gonna start diving in and looking what they are, but understand that its main purpose is to control a circuit with a computer program. It's a programmable microcontroller. So this is what an Arduino looks like. We're seeing one in operation. Let's go ahead and start looking a, a little bit more at the Arduino so we can learn its parts and everything like that. So I'm just gonna start unplugging all this stuff right here. And this is our Arduino. Go ahead and get it disconnected from the power. Let's, let's take a little tour of the Arduino so that we know all of its parts and what all those things do. So you can see that there's a bunch of little holes in the Arduino. I'm going to refer to these as the pins. So I have a bank of pins over here on the left-hand side. And then over here on the right-hand side, I have another bank of pins. So they basically come in three different groups. So let's look at the groups of pins. This first group of pins right over here, these are our power pins, and, and that's pretty easy to tell because they've labeled it right here on the board as power. The power pins that we're mostly going to care about, all right? And let's see if I can get that good in the camera so that we can see that nice and well. All right, we are going to care about this pin right here, that's the five volt pin. So when we've been making circuits already in this class, we've always started our circuits in the positive. This five volt pin is the same as our positive on any power supply. This five volt pin is always turned on. This one is not programmable, so I can't write a computer program that gets this pin to turn on and off. This pin right here is always going to supply five volts of positive current to our board. The next two pins next door to it, 
These are marked GND. GND is short for ground. And if you remember, in every circuit, a circuit is a pathway from positive to negative. Well, on the Arduino, the GND is the same as the negative. So when we're thinking about Arduino circuits, we're thinking about a path from 5 volts to ground. And we're going to see in just a little bit, we can have different places where we can start that 5 volt current or end that 5 volt current. So there's, but this is a ground that is always on. This is always a negative, and this 5 volt right here is always a positive. So we're not really going to worry about the rest of the pins like the IL ref or the reset or the 3.3 volt or this uh, voltage in VIN pin. The only three that we need to worry about are 5 volt, ground, and ground. And there is one more ground I want to point your attention to, and that is on the other side of the board. It's another GND over here by pin 13. So there are three grounds or three negatives on this board. The next set of pins I kind of want to point out to you are these analog in pins. And you can see I have analog pins 0 through 5, so there are six analog input pins. So on our, sense, uh, on our robots, you might remember that our sensors were inputs. Now we're going to talk about inputs as well on an Arduino, but one of the things that we have to understand is there's, there's a couple different kinds of data we're going to have to deal with here on the Arduino. And that is analog data and digital data. So let's really quickly, before we continue our tour of the pins, make sure that we know the difference between analog and digital. Okay. So we have analog, we have digital. Analog simply means a range of information. Whereas digital means on and off. So let's think about things that might be analog. I could have a range of numbers that are analog, for example. So like commonly on the Arduino, we'll see this range from 0 to 1,023. So here I have a full range of numbers. It could be 1,024 different numbers. Remember, I'm including the number 0 here. So there's 1,024 different possibilities. If you think about some of the devices that we've used so far, like uh, our potentiometer with our three pins on it and the, and the knob. A potentiometer is an analog device. Because it can produce a range of voltages. So we could use a potentiometer, for example, to create uh, voltages uh, in the range from 0 volts all the way to 5 volts. Uh, our photoresistor, we've used one of those before. All right, photoresistor as best I can. Again, our photoresistor is an analog device. Uh, it, it can produce, uh, just like our potentiometer, you know, from 0 volts to 5 volts, if I'm feeding at 5 volts. So these are analog things. So like our potentiometers, our photoresistors, those are the kinds of things that would get hooked up to our analog pins. Digital, however, is a little bit different. It just means on and off. So when we represent digital with numbers, we only represent it with two numbers. On is represented by the number 1, and off is represented by the number 0. So that's, that's what we have. It's uh, high. So a lot of times on the Arduino, we represent uh, on with the word high, and we represent off with the word low. So if you think about the devices that we've used so far uh, that are digital devices, you know, we could think about our push button, right? Uh, Our push button either has 0 volts 
or five volts, okay? Uh, we'll probably get to use at some point a switch, right? And again, a switch. Oh, let me make the O on button better. And a switch is, is a digital thing. It's either on or it's off. So again, if I feed it five volts I, with a switch, I can get zero volts or five volts. So that's really the difference between analog and digital. So when we're looking at our Arduino, and we're talking about the analog pin, these, oops, these analog pins are going to be what we attach our, our sensors to, like our potentiometers or our photoresistor. And we're going to let those things act as sensors, and we're going to basically see how much voltage is coming back in a range. So these things are looking for a range of voltages from 0 volts to 5 volts. And because they're dealing with a the range, they're analog. Now, on the other side of the board, we have the digital pins. So digital pins, if they're acting like a sensor, they can detect things that are either on or off. So if we were attaching a button or a switch, we would attach it over here. Also, if I want a light to turn all the way on or all the way off, I would use a digital pin and that, because that's what a digital pin does. But we have some very special digital pins that I want to point out to you uh, right now. And those are these PWM pins. And you can tell uh, that they're PWM because they have this little squiggly next to it. So that's like pin 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. Those are my PWM pins. That means when I'm, for example, attaching a light to them, they can act like did, uh, analog outputs. So for example, pin 10 could make a light turn a little bit on, and then a little bit more on, and then a little bit more on, and then a little bit more on. So I could brighten and dim slowly, or even quickly, but I, I could make that light go through a range of brightnesses with uh, pin 10. And again, those are for only for outputs, not for inputs. If I ever have an analog input, I have to use these pins down here. But if I want to have an analog output, I use a PWM pin. But if I look at pin 8, for example, pin 8 is not a PWM pin. It's a plain old digital pin. That means if I attach a light to it, that light can only go all the way on or all the way off. Or it could read a button. So these digital pins over here, they can be input pins or they can be output pins. I can attach uh, like lights to these things, I can attach buttons to these things, I can attach different sensors. Uh, the only kinds of sensors I can attach, the only kind of inputs that these guys can get are on and off kinds of inputs like buttons or switches. Um, but some of these pins, the PWM pins, can produce a range of outputs. All right. So that is our tour of the uh, Arduino. They're really neat things. Um, one last thing I do want to show, uh, show you is that to power it up, I can either power it up with the 9-volt supply that we've uh, used like for um, our breadboards so far and their power supplies, or I can, right here, I have a USB port. And in another video, I'll show you how to plug one of these into your computer and get the programs that you've written for your computer onto the Arduino. Uh, there is a way to do that safely. Uh, again, this is a circuit, so if you have a short circuit and you attach it to a computer, you could potentially damage your computer. So this is something that we're going to be pretty careful with here in class. But for today, this is the tour of the Arduino, what it looks like and what it does. I'm really excited to get to do this stuff with you guys. Uh, like I said, these Arduinos are about my favorite thing in this class. Uh, and I look forward to making more videos to show you how they work. Thanks, and I hope you're having a great day.